in this um, uh, in, in the, the storyboard that we've got, there's, there's there's several photos of you, and as you accept in your your statement, you are female. One, where are the clothes that you were wearing that night? And duration of unnecessary violence inflicted upon him, together with homophobic abuse, all captured on audio, was both sickening and staggering. He did nothing whatsoever to warrant this. This is 54-year-old Gary Jenkins. He was a consultant psychiatrist and a kind man who had always worked hard to help those around him. The same could not be said about 16-year-old Dion Timms Williams. Late at night on July 20th, 2021, she was hanging out with two adult men, drinking and saying she wanted to jump a gay man. Their plan was sickening, but what really happened that night was even worse. It's shocking that a teenager can even have thoughts like this, let alone do them and claim, I needed this. This is the full, chilling story of Diane Timms Williams and the tragic case of Gary Jenkins. It was a warm afternoon on July 20th, 2021, and Dr. Gary Jenkins was enjoying a drink in the sun. He lived and worked as a consultant psychiatrist in Cardiff, Wales. Cardiff is the capital of Wales in the UK, and it is home to 360,000 people. It's known for its gorgeous castles and rich history. In fact, Cardiff is known as the city of castles, as it's the city with the most castles in the world. But Cardiff is not a page in a history book. It's a lively city filled with opportunities and entertainment for younger people too. Gary was always happy to live there. He found work as a consultant psychiatrist and thrived in the job. He loved helping others and he was fascinated by the human mind. Gary had also been a family man. He had two daughters with his ex-wife. Although they had separated back in 2015, Gary was incredibly close with both of his daughters and they loved him very much. After paying for his drink that day, Gary ran a few errands and then took a walk through Butte Park. But while walking through Butte Park, Gary would lose his life to a pack of crazed, inebriated perpetrators. They laughed and called Gary hate slurs. They took turns striking him and the blows got harder and harder. When they were done with him, they hugged. Then one of the male perpetrators approached the female one. They hugged and kissed. The woman was heard on CCTV footage saying, I needed this. Gary Jenkins was rushed to the hospital where he fought for his life unconsciously for two weeks. He had a broken nose, jaw, and several life-threatening injuries to the head and torso. In early August, 2021, he was pulled off of life support. The three people had taken Gary's life for fun, and they were celebrating in the streets. There was not an ounce of shock or remorse on their faces. A few hours later, the second man in the group used Gary's credit card to buy alcohol. Of course, when you unalive someone in a public space and then use their card to make purchases, you're bound to get caught very soon. The first to be arrested was 36-year-old Lee Strickland. He was visibly drunk. In fact, he looked like being under the influence had been his hobby for a really long time. Soon after came the arrest of 26-year-old Jason Edwards. The woman wasn't arrested until several days later. But here's a plot twist. It wasn't a woman. It was a 16-year-old girl. After taking Gary's life, Dion Timms Williams casually stopped at a gas station to charge her phone. Then she went to her friend's house for a sleepover. At 2 a.m., her mom texted her, do you want picking up XX? No, I'm okay, thanks. In the morning, Dion returned home and greeted her mom as if nothing had happened. She continued to live her life as usual for the next few days. It's unclear when exactly she was arrested and what led the detectives to her modest home in Kriagu, northwest of Cardiff. However, with both her accomplices in custody, it's likely someone revealed her identity as she was tracked via records. When the officers arrested and charged her with first-degree murder, 16-year-old Dion said with a high-pitched voice, no way! She was afraid of the two men in her group, she said. When they began the frenzied onslaught, she felt she had to participate to avoid becoming a victim too. During her interrogation, she acted innocent and wrapped herself tightly in a blanket, looking cold and vulnerable. In this, um, uh, in, in the, the storyboard that we've got, there's, there's, there's several photos of you and as you accept in your, your statement, you are female one. She refused to answer the detective's questions. Where are the clothes that you were wearing that night? 
Where's the Nike bag that you had with you on no, that night? No. Is there any reason that you can't or won't tell me where those clothes in that bag are? No comment. Perhaps Dion thought that without the clothes and bag, the prosecution wouldn't be able to convict her. However, Dion didn't know there was more than enough evidence to send her to prison for a long time. Dion was a liar and a hateful person. No one had forced her to do anything that night. This is her mugshot from her arrest. She enjoyed the spotlight, and she enjoyed that she was the center of attention for that dark reason. She was proud of herself. Even days after the incident, she had no remorse. That was the first clue, that Dion was not a victim of her two accomplices. The other clue is much, much worse. Gary's attack had lasted for 28 minutes. Half of it was recorded on CCTV. The three friends could not only be seen, but heard too, as they shouted at Gary, encouraging each other to hurt him, and made hateful remarks. Through CCTV footage and the two men's interrogation statements, the full story was painted as follows. Jason Lee and Dion knew Butte Park as a big central park with a secret. At night, gay men often met for intimate rendezvous. It was a way to keep their affairs secret in a place where homophobia was still rampant, and there was a lot of shame associated with non-binary or LGBTQ people. But the three pals had no empathy for these men. In fact, they were out to rob them. Dion was heard saying, if we're staying in f***ing Butte Park, can we at least go and steal? They called Butte Park Dirty Park and were openly hateful toward these poor men. They also thought if they robbed a gay man, he was less likely to report them. Since they met in this park in secret, most of them were probably hiding their orientation from female partners, families, or other acquaintances, they thought. So they wouldn't want their secret to come out. In short, they were easy targets. As the three got drunk and stalked the park for victims, they set their eyes on a younger man. Jason pushed Lee into him and Dion asked him if he was gay. When he said he was, Dion told him to have relations with Lee. You guys don't need me to say how wrong this is. The man of course refused, but he did not take the group seriously. Surprisingly, they decided to let him go. It's possible they did so because he was young, athletic, and pretty big. By comparison, Gary was shorter and older. Since the three people were out looking for easy targets, it's likely this was the sole reason they let the first man go. A few minutes later, 54-year-old Gary walked past the group. He thought nothing of them. They were just a bunch of young, loud, drunken people. He had no idea what plans they had that night. Dion, Jason, and Lee gathered around Gary, and Dion said, money, now. Gary didn't even try to resist. He simply handed the bunch his phone and wallet, but that was not enough. The three people then began their vicious onslaught. One of the men asked him, are you a poof? Dion called him much more hateful names. She also can be heard on CCTV encouraging Lee and Jason to go again at Gary. Get down, do it, do it all over again, hit him again. She was also heard laughing. Finally, one of the men was heard saying, stamp on his head. Gary never stood a chance. His agonized pleas to stop turned to whimpers and then to silence. In one final humiliating act, Dion and the men pulled his pants down and left him on the ground. The investigators had another witness come forward. His name was Louis, and he was a simple passerby that evening. For a few minutes, he tried to save Gary's life. He tried to pull the men away from Gary, but they were in a frenzy. They behaved like rabid dogs, paying no attention to Louis or other witnesses. When Louis grabbed Dion, she screamed at him to get off. He had no right to touch her, she said, as she was a girl. What double standards are these? You can take someone's life, but no one can touch you? Louis even tried to lay across Gary's body to fend off the punches. Louis was himself, and when he realized he would lose his life if he persisted, he backed off and phoned 999. Louis testified that he felt the three friends felt they had the right to take Gary's life that night. They felt entitled and proud of themselves. Finally, the CCTV showing Dion saying, I needed that, and the three hugging, kissing, and laughing about it all. And yet, 
She told the officers she was coerced into participating. Dion was a big liar. Before making that statement, she even tried creating a false alibi by convincing a 17-year-old friend to lie for her, claiming she was at his house that night. When the boy found out why she wanted him to cover for her, he froze. Immediately, he told the officers she was not at his house during those hours. She only knocked on his door at 2 a.m. According to the report, upon him opening the door, she asked if she could stay the night. The following morning, she thanked him for allowing her to stay the night, and she said she had made his bed for him. Between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. that night, there was no alibi for Dion. Imagine the waves a case like this makes when the evil mastermind was a 16-year-old. Funnily enough, Lots of people came forward to say this was not the Dion they knew. Dion was a daddy's girl, growing up in Cardiff with two loving parents. She wanted to be a mechanic just like her dad, and she would spend hours with him tinkering with vehicles. Quiet, friendly, and polite were words often used when describing Dion as a child. But a year or two before the incident, Dion's parents split, and according to those who knew her, everything changed after that. She started to hang around kids that were up to no good, and began drinking and smoking weed. While she would also no longer say hello if you saw her on the street, and it became obvious she had gone off the rails. Another neighbor said she was sweet and pretty growing up and never any trouble. It's hard to believe what's happened. She was like Jekyll and Hyde. There was a huge change in her. I think most people in the village knew she was messing about with drugs. She could look very vacant at times. According to this neighbor, Dion could show almost opposite personalities, switching from very sweet to cold and distant while under the influence. At the time of the incident, Dion lived in this home with her mom in Kirigu Village. It's unclear if she was unhappy about it, if she preferred to live with her dad. It's also unclear what sort of relationship she had with her mom, or her dad for that matter. She might have been upset about her parents' breakup, but where did the hateful beliefs stem from? Did she hear them at home, at school? One doesn't just start hating a group of people out of the blue. Also, it's one thing to be frustrated by a divorce in the family and even to struggle with narcotics. It's a whole other thing to take someone's life simply for being different than you. Here is another shocking twist. According to some reports, Dion was in a gay relationship herself. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Why did she call Gary those ugly words then? Or humiliate him in that unspeakable way? Was she that conflicted about her own orientation? Was she that self-hating? It is truly heartbreaking to know the innocent person she killed. Those who spoke of Gary after his death painted the picture of a perfect friend and a kind soul through and through. His ex-wife wrote, Gary was such a kind soul who would never hurt anyone. He was an incredibly generous and creative man who only had good intentions. Gary was one of the most humane, kind, compassionate doctors one could ever come across. No one, absolutely no one, deserves what happened to Gary that night. And when you think this was a man who'd dedicated his life to helping others, it makes it even more tragic. The attack upon Dr. Jenkins by these three defendants was cowardly and senseless in the extreme. The degree and duration of unnecessary violence inflicted upon him, together with homophobic abuse, all captured on audio, was both sickening and staggering. Imagine watching that CCTV footage in court as Gary's family. Dion, Jason, and Lee all pled guilty to manslaughter, robbery, and assault, resulting in bodily harm. However, they were charged with murder. Dion's defense attorney painted her as a vulnerable kid who suffered trauma, which led to narcotic dependency and liability for exploitation. The attorney also mentioned Dion was in a same-sex relationship, so how could she be homophobic? Remember Louis, the man who intervened to try and save Gary's life? He said Dion was evil and sadistic. A series of lies, attempts to create false alibis, and a shocking lack of emotion or remorse formed the prosecution's argument. Dion was just as guilty and just as involved as her two male counterparts. They were all found guilty of murder. Jason Edwards had 35 previous offenses. Not only did he not apologize for his actions, but he claimed he had no memory of that night. 
Lee Strickland also had previous convictions for 58 offenses. He has never worked in his life and has a crippling alcohol dependency. He is also a raging alcoholic, repeatedly maltreating women while drunk. He also expressed no remorse and expressed no apology. Both men were sentenced to 33 years to life in prison. Dion had a 2019 caution for possession of a blade. She had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and had been put into contact with Child Protection Services. The judge said, sure, she was a vulnerable teen, but she took an innocent life, and for all that matters, she was still showing no remorse in court as she was listening to the judge. She was sentenced to a minimum of 18 years in detention, a lighter punishment simply due to her age. But she will have to behave exceptionally well and show remorse to be released as early as her mid-30s. The judge also shared one last shocking twist. The night of July 20th, 2021 was the first night that Dion met Jason and Lee. How can meeting someone for the first time end up like this? And why was she kissing a man 10 years older than her to celebrate their evil act? Honestly, the whole thing is messed up in every single way. It's unclear how Dion came into contact with the two men and why they began drinking together, let alone why they came up with this evil plan. And to think, all three enjoyed it, all three celebrated it, and all three showed zero remorse afterward. It is a harrowing thought that such people exist. Hopefully, Gary's family will be able to move past this horrible tragedy, but it is safe to say he will forever be in their minds, and his chilling death will forever remind them of an outrageous problem still very prevalent all around the world. Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about this case? Should Dion have received a longer sentence? Let me know in a comment. And before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time.